Welcome back to T20 Tactics. On this channel I play Dungeons and Dragons with my friends and we explore combat scenarios and play out the tactics used to defeat monsters quickly and safely, giving you more time to get back to roleplaying. I'm your host and Dungeon Master, Sarsen Zero, and today I'm joined by Blind Oracle, Merrick of War, Fear No Equal, and Asia Wolf. Together we'll run through typical battles that adventurers might see playing Dungeons and Dragons. This is the sixth and final encounter of a demonic incursion, so if you missed the start, you can find a link to it in the description below. Grab your dice, draw your sword, and let's jump into combat. Hit points, abilities, spells, items in hand. Holding plus two shortbow using plus one arrows. Instrument of the bards on my back. 165 out of 170 HP. I'm carrying a warhammer and a plus two shield. 2-10 of Divinity, 4 level 1, 2 level 3s, 1 level 4, 1 level 5, and 1 level 7 and 8. 122 out of 122, all charges remaining on both wands, 4 fourth level, 3 second, 1 third. Arcane recovery is used up. 35 out of 35 hit points, 3 first level slots, 3 second level slots, 1 third, 1 fourth. 195 out of 202 hit points, Great Axe plus 2 in hand, we have Action Surge, Second Wind, and both Indomitables available. Carry over spells and abilities. Aid and Hero's Feast continuing. I have Simulacrum, I have Water Breathing, and Find Familiar. Potion of Fire Giant Strength active. Monsters, abilities, items, and numbers. This encounter has two mercenary demons. These are mercenaries that fight for all sorts of bargains and agreements. They are neutral evil and come from the lower planes. The one to the south is known as an Ultraloth. These are mercenary commanders that will marshal troops. This seems to be the source of the demonic incursion in this area. Kill this and you fix all the problems. This mercenary commander has demonic resistances that you've seen before. They resist cold fire lightning, non-magical weapons. They're immune to poison and also acid. They're also immune to charm, fright, and poison. They have true sight. They have a passive perception of 17, so rogue, you gotta be on your toes a little bit more than usual. They have innate spell casting of a variety of spells, magic resistance, and their weapons are magical as well. Speaking of weapons, they can teleport, they have a hypnotic gaze, and they have a long sword attack that they can use three times. They are accompanied by a bodyguard, which is a gargoyle mercenary commander, also known as Nykeloth. The gargoyles have demonic resistances, cold fire lightning, non-magical weapons, immunity to acid and poison, and the poison condition. They have blind sight out to 60 feet, a little more problematic for the rogue, but a passive perception of 14, so that's going to make it a little bit easier. Their innate spell casting is not as impressive, but they still have a couple. They have claws, they have a great axe, and they can also teleport. Terrain and effects. Terrain is rather cramped, you guys have made your way up to the top of this building, but they're using as a command post. There is a hole in the center of it that leads down to the same cauldron that you know and love before. It's a 20 foot drop, so 2d6 falling damage should you fall down there. If you fall onto the cauldron, then you might get cursed by the cauldron as before. If there's no questions about terrain, let's talk about tactics for this fight. What do you think? The Ultraloth is probably the far more dangerous of the two, especially with the hypnotic gaze. It's the smaller of the two. Getting there seems like it might be the biggest challenge. Yeah, we've got an enclosed space and a bunch of high-level spell slots, so smoke them if you got them. I don't want to do the banish thing again. It's the answer, but I don't want to do it. So you guys are saying focus fire the southern one? Roger. Well, let's get to it then. Roll some initiative. Anybody have higher than a 20? Rogue has a 21. Anyone have between a 20 and a 15? I got a 19 on the mercenary demons. Anyone have between a 15 and a 10? The cleric has 14. 11 on the owl. 11 on the fighter. What do you got for me, wizard? Oh, I got a big ol' 7. Rogue, you're up first. Who is after me on the initiative order? I am. Okay, we're gonna play this safe. First action is going to be to use the Bandor to cast protection from good and evil on myself, and then I'm going to take the hide action. 25. After that is the mercenaries. The mercenary commander can fly for 60 feet. He's gonna fly over here, gonna cast Firestorm. A storm made of sheets of roaring flame appears at a location you choose within range. The area of the storm consists of up to 10 10 foot cubes you can arrange as you wish. Each creature in the area must make a dexterity save or take 7d10 fire damage. Half as much on a success. Of all the times to not have fire resistance on. Fighter, cleric, and rogue. DC 17 dexterity save. 18. 12. 18. 42 on a failure, so that's the cleric. 21 on a success, so that's the fighter. Zero on an evasive success, which is the rogue. And then he's gonna fly back. Gargoyle mercenary demon. He's gonna cast mirror image on himself. After that, we're gonna go to the cleric. We're gonna go big or go home here. Let's go ahead and cast 
Holy Aura at level 8. Divine Light washes out from me and coalesces in soft radius in a 30 foot radius around me. Creatures of my choice shed dim light in a 5 foot radius, have advantage on all saving throws, and other creatures have disadvantage on attack rolls against them. That's a spell. In addition, when a fiend or undead hits an affected creature with a melee attack, the aura flashes with brilliant light. The attacker must make a constitution saving throw or be blinded until the spell ends. Let's go ahead and move into the room after the cleric is the owl. Just move south of the fighter and fly upwards so he's not in melee range. These guys fly, so he's going to be within melee range no matter what. Okay, never mind then. Yeah, he's fine where he is. Dodge. Fighter. Run me to the spot north of the Ultraloth. We're going to fly across the pit. That way I can get attack of opportunity if the other guy decides to leave. And we're going to dash to get there because we're going to action surge to hit him. Wow, crit for 13 damage. Less than I normally get on a regular attack. Second attack... That is a 23 to hit. 23 hits. For 16 damage. Attack number 3. That is a 26 to hit for 16 damage. After the fighter is a wizard. Move to the doorway but not in so I can see the guy across the way. I'll fire a magic missile. And I'm burning 6 charges on the wand. Over channel 4. <laughs> it's a free one. Might as well max it. 4 plus 1 is 5. 5 plus 5 is 10. 10 times 8 is 80. He takes 80 points of force damage. Wait a minute. Don't want to forget that I have shield. No, I don't have shield. Yeah, that would have sucked. <laughs> you just would have counterspelled it. Yeah. I think I got one more, right? To the east, please. After the wizard, we go to the rest of the wizard's turn. Same thing. Kind of move him up there. Forgot the rogue's in the way. He's good. Dodge. After the wizard, we go to the rogue. Speaking of in the way. Yep. Very, very in the way. Sorry. 25 foot movement gets me to the edge of the corridor. And we're going to shoot the commander. That is exposing from hiding. Does a 23 hit. Yep. Respectable. 47 points of damage. Lethal. Bam. Did not like Firestorm. Do not want again. Right. Bonus action. Dash. Dash. Let's go to the other side of the cleric. After the rogue, we go to the mercenaries. I think the only way this lasts more than one round is we throw a darkness upon ourselves, And that's an action. After that, we go to Cleric. I would like to cast Dispel Magic on the Darkness. Let's go ahead and cast it at level 4. Sounds good. Darkness is gone. I'll start moving closer to the Gargoyle. After the Cleric is the Owl. Fighter advantage, please. After the Owl, we go to the Fighter. Starting with advantage. That is a 31 to hit. Not quite a crit. He gets a 6 or higher on the first one, so you hit one of the duplicates. Yep. Second attack. 22 to hit. You find the correct target with the second attack. 22 hits him. 20 damage. Third attack. 24 to hit. You find a duplicate. And that's it for me. After the fighter is the wizard. Step out, do a magic missile. Seize up the final level four. That is a two. Two plus one is three. Three plus five is eight. Eight times six is 48. So he takes 48 points of damage. He's good where he is. I'm just going to keep him back here. Simulacrum. He's going to move out. He's going to over channel. His final fourth level slot. Four plus one is five. Plus five is ten. Ten times six is sixty. Sixty points of damage will drop him. And that's the final encounter. You guys loot through the room and you collect a total of... 42,000 gold pieces. These mercenaries were paid quite well for their services. That comes out to 10,500 gold pieces each. You find a staff of healing, bracers of defense, a potion of speed, and an oil of sharpness. What is the recommended distribution on those? I'm curious. So staff goes to cleric, bracers goes to wizard. But imagine speed goes to the rogue and oil goes to the fighter. Of course, it doesn't have to be that. It could be something else. But the next dungeon, the adventurers will level up to level 17 and head off to a red dragon mountain to fight all of the encounters that they can there. The chaos and destruction that these demons would have wrought upon this plane has been stopped. The adventurers are successful. They're going to head back home after this run. The adventurers have defeated the demon commander, so that's the final encounter in this dungeon. The players will now level up to level 17 and move on to the next dungeon. Next week, I'll release a video with all six encounters from the demonic incursion, and we'll talk about the particular challenges of the different encounters. Thank you for stopping by. I'm Saracen Zero, and I will see you next time.